Yo, yo, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. Today is a special day. Who we got here in the studio? Kevin Baker, what's up, dude? Not much, man. Glad to be here. You guys have no idea who Kevin is, do you? I don't know who I am, so he don't doesn't worry about it. It's okay. Kevin is the dude. He's like the guy that you call when your shit's broken. <laughs> right? I am that sucker for sure. It is, it is. So we're going to do, I don't even know what we're doing today, but we're going to figure it out. It's all coming up. All right, so today's episode, we got Kevin with us. Kevin does a lot of uh, pouring, lots, what makes a lot of tubes himself. You guys know I'm a tube fanatic. I use a lot of different types of tube heads. And so we're not going to really specifically talk about, you know, colors and sizes so much, but really the actual tube head itself and what makes a tube head more important than another one as far as the hook size, the weights, uh, the, the type of the shape of it. There's a lot that goes into it. And so we're going to try to break that down and show you some of the different types of tube jig heads that I like to use. And then we're also going to start to pour our own. We're going to show you how we actually make our own tube heads. And um, yeah, we'll give you a run through on some of the equipment to pour some of your jigs. We'll show you the ridiculous amount of different tube jig heads that Travis Manson has collected over the years. Ridiculous. He's got a, an assortment of tube jig heads here that you wouldn't even imagine existed. Uh, but I'm as excited as I'm sure you guys are to hear about some of these different oddball variations and the conditions he'd like to use those in on top of some of the stuff we use every day to put smallies in the boat. All right, before we get started, guys, I just want to take some time off. So Kevin and I fished probably three, four years ago for the first time, four years ago. Yeah, it's been about... Uh, I think our first fishing trip was... To Lake Ontario, wasn't it? Yeah, we went to Ontario, and then we spent some other time on some New York lakes. And... Okay, Finger Lakes. We did Oneida. So we kind of made like a two, three, four day trip, and we got on some pretty good fish, right? For sure, yeah. I mean, it We've... was it was your first time up there. Yeah. So you experienced the epic smallmouth fishing on Lake Ontario. Uh, the Finger Lakes were awesome. We actually, I think we hit like eight of them in one day. Yeah, I think we hit them all, good, bad, the ugly, you know, the, the hundred mile downhill trips to get to the lakes, the smoke and breaks. My breaks and, were smoking, man. But uh, we, we, made the, we made the we made the trip, it was pretty good. It was, it was. But no, Kevin's been, uh, I mean, he's more of the, uh, I don't know what you would say, the tool guy. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you guys know, I, I don't even know how to use a screwdriver. So I had a lot of issues, you know, running big waters, things like that on my, my boats, both my current boat and my, my old boat. Yeah. And uh, you were always a, a good guy to help me out and get me back on the water when... We fix them when they when break. And, uh, you know, it's been a good trade-off for me because I get the good opportunity. I've learned a ton from Travis, you know, when he has this name Smallmouth Crush for his channel. It's no joke, man. We get up there and we really hit them hard. And I've learned everything I know about catching smallmouth from Travis being a Northeast, you know, kind of Pennsylvania, Maryland guy, newer to the hobby, five, six years it's been amazing to spend time fishing with him and the stuff that we, I've learned about drop shotting and, and especially the tube bite. You yeah. want to put smallmouth in the boat, get a tube tied on and learn how to fish it and you're going to put them in the boat. So For definitely sure. listen in on this one. Now I made a video a few months back actually when the channel first started on tube fishing. I went through all the different types of tubes that I have um, and I'll put a link in the description below as well as at the end of this video. So if you guys want more in-depth detail on specific colors and sizes and why do with what check out that video so today is going to be more about the actual head itself so let's crack open the mother box here right so this has all the different tubes that I use on a regular basis and this box is basically the miscellaneous tube box yes. this is when I go to some extreme places all right you notice there's some extreme tube heads in there for sure uh, this one yeah. catches my eye right away you know <laughs> this is what i'm talking about i've never Sometimes. seen anything like this well, i imagine this thing's going to come through the water spiraling and right. i know there's a time when that bite's going to happen so travis is more prepared than anybody on that and you know that's some of the stuff you're going to find in this miscellaneous box right right so let's talk about the standard <clears throat> teardrop this is really the 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 typical uh, tube head that i'm going to use on a regular basis and I have sizes from eighth ounce, three sixteenth, quarter, five sixteenths to three eighths, and I also have some halves and three quarters. Now, I really like a, a one odd or two odd size hook on these teardrops, and I use these probably eighty percent of the time. I'd say this is the majority of what and we so throw. And so do you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
uh, especially when you're just dragging a tube or you're, um, uh, you know, if you're, if you're popping off of rocks or if you're in vegetation, you're snapping it with the size tubes that we use, anywhere from the Bitsy tubes all the way up to a three and a half, four inch tube, these teardrops with the one out or the two out size hooks are going to, are going to be the way to go. Now there's going to be some extreme cases, which is why I have a half ounce some three quarters in here and that's all going to really dictate obviously the depth right so if you're For fishing sure. in a lot of wind and deep water or current that's when i'll go to a heavier tube but that's really rare the whole majority of the time you're trying to use the lightest weight possible yep in order to present that bait present that tube in a natural setting so you just want that tube to kind of just go over the bottom, bang off the rocks, and not get caught. You use a heavier weight, a lot of times you're going to get snagged up for sure. more often than not. So yeah. it's important to use the lightest you can get away with. But sometimes the lightest really is a 3 8 ounce. Yep. And you, you have to use that. And Travis talks about the versatility of this particular one. You know, we'll drag this across sandy shoals. We'll drag this through zebra mussels. We'll run this across rock piles. This one really goes everywhere that we're trying to find fish. And, you know, one of the keys to that is keeping that hook point close to the body. You've got enough to get a good bite on the fish, but we're not catching on everything else down there in the water. It's running kind of nose down. And when it does get hung up in something that's the front of the body, you can give it a good pop on your rod and get it out of there. Someday we'll make sure Travis shows you his little banjo technique. He gets them out of there all the time. Right, so. right. So, I mean, let's talk about that real quick. I mean... I didn't want to get too much into the specifics of tube fishing, but one technique that I look forward to is actually getting hung up in chunk rock. Mm -hmm. um, when you're in an area that you get a lot of snags, sometimes I will go to a heavier weight because what I like to do is be able to, to get that bait stuck in the rocks and snap that line mm -hmm. like a lot, yeah. right? Like crazy until it pops loose. And oftentimes, especially when you're in clear water and you know there's bass around, when that bait gets on off that rock and pops up, that's a reaction bite right there. There's a fish there, boom. There's no he doubt. He grabs onto it. And that happens more often than not when you have a snag and of course you gotta be around fish. Um, but it's a it's a technique that I actually look forward to using. So there's a lot of specifics that even go further yeah. into. And it's all based on past experience and you know, getting out on the water and, and utilizing these techniques. For sure. Now you can see I have a lot of barbarian hooks as well. So a barbarian hook is shaped just a little bit differently. How would you describe a barbarian hook? This is primarily a deep throat hook. You know, it's basically a J hook that they throw a, re, a you know a space in here, and these really pin the fish well. You know, there's some trade-offs to it. It's a it's a stiff hook, and uh, sometimes that's not exactly what you're looking for. But especially, I know Travis likes to throw these in the rocks too. This is a great option for that. You're going to have a little bit more of a wide gap. You're going to get a little more distance between the body of the bait and the hook. And, uh, you know, you really get them stuck back there in that little throat area where they've got set up, which is a nice little feature to have. And I was really big on those barbarian hooks. Wrong one, bro. Oh. Right here. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. <laughs> where were we? Barbarian hooks. Yes. You were throwing them a lot. I was throwing them a lot three, four, five years ago. But now since we started pouring our own and really focusing on that one odd and two odd size hooks, I really don't have a need. In fact, I don't really feel that we need to pour a whole lot of those in the future. Yeah, um, we don't do it much. I think we're I think we're fine there. Now, a lot of the hook size on the base is really going to determine the size of the plastic. I mean, there's legit four and a half, five inch tubes that guys throw for smallies. Yeah, I tried it. I mean, it's, it's legit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it does work. It does, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say you get the number of bites sure. that Travis might pull, you know, that we pull with this, you know, two and a half, two, two and three and quarter half, yeah. size, mm -hmm. you know, or even the three. Um, but you definitely get them. And when you get them, they tend to be good key bites, but you, you fish a little differently with them. Right. When you're using the bigger size tubes, I'll actually, and, the, and these, I don't know what brand this is, but these are, these are ones that I commercially bought and I just have a stockpile of them. Different sizes, again, 3 16 quarter, 3 eighths, but I have kind of, kind of like a EWG. Like a book, yeah. It really looks like a, uh, oh, a size 2-odd 
uh, EWG hook in there. Absolutely. Uh, light wire. And it certainly does the trick when I need a little bit more beefier hook and a little bit more gap from the hook point to the shaft there. It, you know, it would look a little silly on a three and a half, but when you right. get up in those bigger tubes, which again, I don't experiment with those too much, yeah. but there's a time and place so I do have them. You know, if I'm going to a new body of water, I know St. Clair, for instance, they use some mega sized tubes when they're for dragging sure. there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely a legit pattern. Is it something I should start utilizing where, where I fish more on, on the Thousand Islands area in upstate New York? Probably. It's possible. You know, you kind of, you think about what you're doing when you're using this. We're working to kind of match a hatch, a goby, a crawfish, depending on where we are. And, uh, you know, though there are some giant gobies in a lot of these great lakes, you would say that the majority of them are still ranging in kind of that, mm -hmm. that three inch range. So, you know, these baits really seem to put the numbers in the boat. And, you know, we can attest to the fact that if you're putting numbers in the boat, the quality bites will usually be there. So, you know, that's usually the reason that we're hanging in with these baits that we're confident in. That's one huge piece and um, and that we know kind of match what we're trying to, to fish with. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if we dig a little further in this box, you'll notice I got a couple really unique. This is really here. interesting. It's almost like a bullet head. Right, right. right. So I, I forgot where I got these from. I'll try to find out. But you can see that these are heavier. These are half, three quarters. Mm -hmm. I think there's even a one ounce in here wow. where the lead basically takes up the whole hook. And this is great when you're fishing strong current. So a thousand islands, St. Lawrence River is going to have a lot of I can current. See that for sure. St. Clair, mm -hmm. Detroit River, places like that, um, where you're going to need a little bit heavier tube head. This is when this would come into play. Now, I don't know if the hookup ratio is going to be as good, but sometimes that's a trade-off. A heavier weight. Right, and you might you're getting in the areas to, where the fish are, but you might miss a couple on the actual. You, you might just because of the, the there's so much weight there. Um, what are these? Uh, Mark Zona tube heads. I don't know if he's still part of that company or not, or maybe he was back in the day. Big bite, to mega. I don't. There's quite a bit of I weight on that of there. Same deal. I got some with rattles. We got some. Is that uh, what we've got yeah, here? show that up. That's so what, here's one in a bait. And you can kind of see, you know, this is where if you had one of those big four-inch baits and this, this thing would probably fit the profile of it great, you can see it kind of balloons out there at the top, but we can still get these, uh, these on this particular jig head. And, um, you know, there's a lot of weight there, and this is going to come down, I'm imagining kind of nose first, the way that that thing's built. It's got your, you know, your 45-degree line tie there, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to be able to really hop that one around on the sure. bottom quite a bit. And these are great to imitate gobies as, as well as crayfish, but really they were designed to imitate yep. gobies and give them that big head here. You can here. see you've got that big profile. Um, and that allows you to put more weight in and fish deeper or in heavier current if you have to. I don't use these a whole lot, um, but they're certainly there if I do run into those situations. It looks like I got them all the way from a half to uh, three quarters of an ounce as well. So that's my standard box. So this standard box will go with me wherever I go. This here box, just kind of the extras. You, you mentioned, uh, why don't you grab that one tube we, we looked at earlier. So this tube head here is just a, a, another one that I must have bought along the way. Yeah. Probably came out of some discount gas station. It looks like with that red hook. I think it was up on St. Clair <laughs> somewhere. We've been in a couple of them. Right, right. But this, this here was just designed, again, to get more weight, to get that tube down if you're fishing it deeper. I mean, there's better choices that I have over this, but again, I, I have them. This is a good example okay. just to show, you know, kind of, and, you know, we're going to talk about this a little bit later when we go into our pouring video and the reason we even bother to pour our own jig heads. But, you know, when I look at this, this is a big jig head, you know what I mean? And when you're looking at, you couldn't even put that in, so, and, you know, people sure. have but that hook's gonna hang all the way out the back and it's just not the right scenario. No. This is basically what I showed up with my first day with Travis, he thought I was crazy. You know, something like this. And this just is a good example of why you're gonna see we take the time to pour this jig versus some mm -hmm. of the commercially available jigs. Right, right. So again, different sizes. I got some heavier ones in here. There's another just 
This one's really unique. Yeah, make. let's talk about that. That's so that's kind of like a, a glider. Okay, and you can um, see that. If you guys can see it from the front, it's got fins. almost looks like a spaceship. Right, this right. thing is crazy. It's really designed just to do another, give it another goby. Another right? goby imitation. Another goby imitation. Yeah, that's um, really unique. I've actually heavy, never seen that Half ounce, yeah. three quarters. A lot of weight, big hook. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're definitely getting down there, presenting a big profile For with sure. that. It's kind but, of fun to dig through this box sometimes and see some things that I've never even seen right. before. And so, I, again, I don't use those that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? And maybe maybe we need to start experimenting with so Let's talk that. about this because I know people have asked you this recently, kind of in reference to okay, a sure. round ball style head. And this is kind of sitting in your box here. It's got a barbarian right. hook. I can tell that this is a jig has not been thrown very recently. No. But uh, why is it even in your box? Sure. So I use the round round ball specifically if I'm fishing and targeting fish on bed. Sure. And the reason being is if I use a teardrop, a lot of times when that bait falls, it's going to circle around. It might not land exactly where you want it to sure. land. Sure. My theory is with a round ball inserted in that tube, it's going to land pretty precise near that bed. Right. You're going to be able to make more accurate casts. If you're trying to drop it on their nose, that's the sure. one that's going to put yeah. it there for uh, you. That's when I would use this. Other than that, if you're in a pinch, it would work. It'll work. It'd yeah. be fine. I really just I feel that that tube will drag and and work a lot better with that teardrop insert that spreads that weight out inside. Yep. Still allows you to get a good hook set. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't use these as much. If I was doing a serious bed fishing deal where throwing a tube was the way to catch them. I prefer other ways yeah. when I'm bed fishing, sight fishing, but I would certainly put that on there for sure. sure. All right, guys, so now we're actually gonna start pouring some of these jigs that we talked about. I already went through the importance of having the right size jig with the right tube, and fortunately, my buddy Kevin was able to come over today, brought all of his equipment, and we're gonna go to town and pour some of these bad boys. Now, I was getting low, and these are really the size tubes that, the tube heads that I like to use. The teardrop, real basic. We're using the, was it Mustad size one odd or a Mustad size two odd? And we're just restocking for the year. I mean, we go through a lot of these. Snags, rocks, we're throwing tubes in crazy places, and you're gonna break off a lot, so we go through a lot. I mean, we got a lot of lead here, right? We do, and this is only a portion of what I brought because Travis throws in the rocks a lot. Exactly. So exactly. we lose a lot of jig heads, but it's faster to retie and make them in the winter than it is to waste time when we're catching. So sure, and it's a lot. It, it's a lot more inexpensive when you actually have the equipment. Plus, what's nice about this is you can actually use the right size hook that you feel comfortable with that you're used to throwing. Where a lot of times when you're buying name brand or you know, products off the shelves, you're not getting a true product that you actually have confidence in. And, you know, I want to know for sure that when I'm picking up a, a quarter ounce tube head teardrop, that it's going to have a one odd hook that I like and that it's exactly, you know, what I expect every time. So I like to keep the brands all the same. So in this case, since we're pouring our own, it's just great that we have a stockpile of the same type of jig that we just keep reloading, you know, when we get low. And that's a critical thing, you know, when you go pick them up at the stores, and I learned this as a, a you know, newer angler when I started fishing with Travis. You know, I had a box full of tube jigs that I had picked up at Bass Pro, and we went out fishing, and he slaughtered me, first of all, because he's got the right presentation to catch the fish. And uh, you start to learn that not all jig heads are created equal, and it doesn't have to be expensive, they don't have to be fancy, but they need to be right, mm -hmm. and that's what we end up pouring here. I remember that. So that was up on Oneida, It right? was, yeah. It was our first trip on Oneida. Actually, maybe it was our second time. It, it was, it was our first time when we actually fished a tube, right? And we Together. targeted smallmouth. You know, right, it was right. the right conditions for that. And so we go up to Oneida, and we're we're starting to throw tubes. And I, I fished with you a few times on Ontario, where right. we were drop shot. Yeah. And you pick up this just this. I remember it was just like this weird tube that had. I don't know what was the tube called. What was it? I don't even know. It was a big. It, was it like looked a like a saltwater tube. tube. It was yeah. neon orange with a brown stripe no, through bro, it. No, bro, you got to finesse. I go, yeah. your hook's way too big. It was bad. You, you got to get it perfect. That hook's got to look natural on that tube, and it has to be able to obviously have the type of hook that's going to be able to pin those smallies and get them in the boat in largemouth as well. So. That's it. And obviously Travis went through the you know the reason that we fish some more compact tubes and why they're productive for us, but. 
you, it was a big learning experience to see the difference between those giant tubes that you buy in the package. And trust me, people catch them on them, but it has to be the right conditions and smallmouth don't love them, so. Yeah, I mean, I like, like I, you guys all know, I like to have things like right, you know what I mean? If I'm out there putting my time in, my equipment, my tackle, everything has to be right for me. So why don't we get into it? So let's start out with uh, doing a little pouring here. So really what you start out with is you have to buy some type of lead, what is this thing? Well, don't, first thing, don't get intimidated. You know, this is a, a Lee production, you know, uh, pouring pot. This is about a $70 pot. They're not crazy okay. expensive, but I started pouring jigs with a burner that you would heat stuff over a campfire, you know, a little Coleman campfire stove burner and a lodge cast iron pan and one of these molds. And that's how I really started pouring jigs. And it's a little bit more challenging, so but you can like, absolutely like do Amish. it that way. Yeah, man, you know, I was you know, just trying to get into it. It's expensive. You know, you spend $30 on a jig. You buy a bunch of the, uh, is that a beard crack? Is that what that no, was? No, no, no. So either way, you, you buy, you know, you invest in some hooks. You get the stuff that you like there. You spend some money in a jig. You're not always able to just drop a couple hundred bucks to play around on a hobby. So improvise. You know, you can find things to do this where it doesn't have to be crazy expensive, but eventually you find that it's something you enjoy doing. I really, uh, I recommend this particular pot. It's very easy to use, easy to maintain. It's been, you know, in hiding all fishing season and I bust it out today, fire it up and it's working perfectly. So that's a nice thing to be able to count on. So does it come with the tray as well? The tray is out of a toaster oven that I okay. bought to uh, to actually bake jig heads, and we might get the opportunity to talk about that a little bit later once you powder coat them. If you bake them, it really helps that powder coating hang on for a long time. Okay. Again, we like to throw things up in the rocks and that powder coating holds on. So, But I just repurposed this tray for that. You know, we just want to, this hobby is all about being smart, being creative. You don't want to spend a ton of money all the time, but you want to get the product you're looking for right. at the end. So. Sure. So, I mean, this is pretty simple. $70 pot. You do have to provide some type of tray to catch the, the lead. Yeah. I mean, we're doing in the studio here. We got some good carpet here, a nice table. So we want to be careful with that. It's probably better to do out in the garage or someplace, a it's workshop true. where you don't really care too much. Um, there is a slight smell of lead in here. A little bit, you know, I'm it's little, good. To, uh, nice to have a good ventilated area. A little lighthead. We got the window open, so yeah. we're good to go there. Uh, where are you finding your lead? I guess that's, that's, I you mean, know, that's I wouldn't even know where to start. It's one of the things that's a little bit challenging when you get into this. There are a lot of places, you know, I'm, but if you search online, there are plenty of lore part companies that can provide lead you buy in bulk. eBay's got it. Um, I'm in the automotive industry, so I've had the opportunity to get things like, you know, lead cut off out of uh, recycled. Everything that I use is recycled. Try not to be buying more mass production lead. I get a lot of tire wheel weights. Go talk to your local wheel shops, your local uh, gas stations, your Jiffy Lubes, and and they can hook you up with, they got to pay to get rid of their lead. So if you come and take their lead, it's really? not going to bother them at all for okay. sure, you know. Okay. And, um, but you know, you have to be a little careful when you get wheel weights and things like that. They have steel clips in them. Some wheel weights are not made of lead. So you got to educate yourself a little bit and, and kind of check on the product you're getting. You'll know once you drop it in the hot pot, but you don't want to put something in there. Yeah, and, and ruin lead's pretty flexible. About your lead. I mean, yeah. I, the, only, the, the way I check is I normally will, will Start chewing on it a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that smarter? Honestly, it makes a lot of sense. Right. Now that you're kind of, that, that clues me in on a few things. Right, but right. Yeah, so, you know, you, you can check it. You want to try to get the cleanest lead you can. That's one thing. If you get wheel weights, take a few minutes, wash them, soap, water, a little degreaser, get them clean. That way, when you drop in your pot, you're not getting a ton of burn off, a lot of smell, residual, residual nasty stuff. You'll notice some of this stuff laying on the tray down here. That's kind of slag that builds up on the top of the pot. That's all of the things that are not pure lead builds up on the top of the pot you want to keep that clean so that it doesn't clog up your pouring spout you know keep it off the top so that the lead stays nice and as you add new lead you'll want to continue to clean that off and we'll show you some of that as we move forward here so and that's what this fork's for right? that's what that fork okay. is for that's the uh, that's the trick of the trade there. right there nice okay yep that, that fork's Perfect. been pouring lead since my first uh, cast iron pot so it's it's been holding on and it. it works. Yeah. That's the that's the whole point of this. You know, when we get to do doing stuff DIY and we're trying to make a lot of things, you can do it easy and you don't have to spend a lot of money. That was a fork in my drawer and it's been working for years. Mm -hmm. So really the lead you got for free, yep. just because you're in the industry and you're able to get that. But if you were looking to, you know, finding some lead, those are some good tips. You can, can definitely source so you, it. I mean, you don't have to pay for lead if, nope. you, if you do some leg work there. Yep. So 70 bucks worth a pot, you're going to have to buy your hooks. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk to the hooks in a little bit. Let's talk about the actual mold itself. 
Yep. So which one is this? We're pouring with the Do It Molds okay. tapered tube jig, okay? Uh, this is available in a ton of different places. Their molds are very easy to use. They don't require a lot of maintenance. And the nice thing is when we're talking about, you know, making a tube with the, the hooks in it that we want, sometimes you need to modify the jig just a little bit to hold those hooks, but it's very easy to do with these. They're very, you're, you're able to, they're just steel. You can make changes. It's very easy to make them fit the application that you're trying to create. And uh, they're a very good, easily accessible mold mm -hmm. to pour these type of jigs. And they, they make all kinds. I Tons mean, of jig uh, molds. We really, I don't throw a whole lot of, um, you know, maybe some net rig, some round balls, things like that. Uh, but that's really, you know, it. I, I don't... He doesn't flip a lot of football head jigs around, you know, so... I mean, a little bit. Not really, not his but, speed. He'll yeah. flip a creature bait before he flips right, some jig. Right, right. So... But, so, I mean, I, but you can make yeah. anything and everything that you want. Anything Some stuff I prefer want. just to buy. Yeah. You know what I mean? The with thing that's really tubes, cool with this company simple. is they actually will sell you a completely blank sheet of lead, and you can take it to your favorite machine shop and have them make something that doesn't even exist yet. Mm -hmm. You can send them specs, and they'll make you things that don't exist yet. So you have a ton of possibilities with this company. Uh, you know, not that we have anything to do with them, but it's a great product. So sure. And how much does this run for, <clears throat> roughly? About thirty bucks. I okay. think thirty, thirty-five bucks. You get it shipped right to your door. They're available in a hundred different places so on the internet. So now we're up to about a hundred dollars for yep. the setup. Uh, and then we need to talk about the hooks. Yep. So I really like these these uh, these Mustad one odd and two odd. They're actually a steelhead hook. Um, like I don't get, I don't understand why they're in the steelhead hook category. You know Can what? You explain that. Sometimes it's weird. You know, I think it has to do with the size of wire and what someone else thinks this hook was built to do. Okay. Um, but you know, we've come to find that these hooks are just the right length primarily the correct sharpness you know they've got the 90 degree uh, mm -hmm. line tie on them they fit the type of jig that we're trying to pour and they fit the tubes that we throw day to day so they end up working yeah they work great i also <clears throat> i was a big time believer and i still am in, in the barbarian hooks that i've used in the past i'm starting to get away from that a little bit and just kind of going with these uh the reason why we obviously have two different size hooks is because one is going to be used for throw, put into a smaller tube like this two and a half inch tube, where a three inch or larger tube, um, you know, I prefer the two odd hook. It's just a little bit beefier, a little bit easier to, to work into that tube and, and use. Um, where do we buy these again? I know we bought them online. Do you remember? I think, uh, you know, there are places like Shorty's Hooks, Shorty's Hooks uh, okay. Loreparts.com can yep. help you with things like that. There's a ton of options. Again, I've bought a lot of hooks on eBay, especially treble hooks and things that you like to get that you use a lot of. Mm -hmm. So you can always look there. The nice thing about working out of someone who's got a catalog is you can kind of count on the fact that you're getting the hook you really want to buy as opposed to just something that's supposed to be in the picture and you get burn on it. So, sure. you know, when you're investing in these hooks, these are, you know, bulk hook orders. Yeah, bulk. We've, so what is it? There's a thousand hooks. There's a thousand hooks. I don't know exactly. I mean, they range, but they're probably a couple hundred, maybe 150 bucks, 200 bucks. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's your biggest expense right there. Yeah. Is the hook. And you can get smaller quantities. The price goes up per hook just a little bit. But if you're not mm -hmm. going to pour a thousand jigs in your lifetime, you don't right. have to buy a thousand. Right. Th this will last us a year or two or three. Yeah. It really will. It's a um, it's a lot of. A if lot we go of through jigs, this so. much, then the environmental protection agency is going to be on our butt for polluting the waterways with all this lead. You know. There's no mean? question. No. So you know. We'd be in trouble. Travis goes through a lot more of the tube jigs than I do. I try to go get them every once in a while, but uh, we can definitely go a long time with a box of hooks like this. I poured, I think, the last season and a half out of this box already, and we're going to pour more for this year. We're going to have plenty to get us through the year, and it's good, you know, and uh, we got a fresh box of two aughts here that are going to take us through a long time. So Now, a couple tools that you use when you're uh, clipping the excess lead off is... Yeah. Uh, just this a is... pair of side cutters in any okay. capacity. This is just a mini pair I've found that works really well. Um, again, something I had lying around in the garage. Any pair of side cutters, wire cutters, even mm -hmm. a pair of regular pliers to just kind of rock it off. The thing you want to be careful of when you're cleaning these things up, especially when working with lighter wire hooks, is bending the hook while taking mm -hmm. some of that extra material off. Sure. You know, we will show you probably at some point we pour a light wire hook for like a Ned rig type scenario and uh, any manipulation bends that hook. So you have to be really careful about that. Right, right. No, those are good points. So really, uh, for two, three hundred dollars, you can be set yeah. for 
a long time. Years. You pour yourself a lot of jigs. You know, mm -hmm. it's something in the wintertime we're all going crazy trying to figure out what we're going to do because we can't fish. You know, I'd spend my time building these, building silver buddies, you know, stuff that... Uh, That's right. You pour your own silver buddies. Yeah, silver well. buddies is another yeah. thing you lose quite a bit. You can get the parts really inexpensive. You can put them together and some things that just seem to trigger fish, a little bit of paint here and there, a little bit of a sticker or a change to the bait, things that you can't get out of the package in the big big stores, you know, mm -hmm. you can make them yourself. So when it's the difference between one fish and a tournament, you might as well invest the time to get it right. Sure, sure. And with one mold, I mean, it's going to take a while for us to make some jigs. I mean, we're going to spend a couple hours here yep. putting this all together. <clears throat> uh, we're probably going to use up a majority of that lead right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just go to town. It's kind of going to be a, a assembly line here of, of you and me. We're going to just go through it and uh, stockpile them up, get them in the correct box. Everything's labeled, ready to go for this season. I'm That's excited. Real simple. Get your pot, get your lead, get your hooks, get your mold, and just start creating something that's your own. Your own design, your own little special. That's exactly it, you know, and then you go out and fish it, you find what works, you find what didn't, and you have the opportunity to come back and tweak, you know. Have a couple boxes laying around that you can divide the jigs as you make them, because it gets a little bit t tricky to figure out which one's which after they're poured, and just spend some time, enjoy your time, and get ready for the season. All right, well, why don't we get into it? Let's show everybody how you actually pour. It's a real simple process. I'll let you kind of take over since, uh, you know, you like to get your hands dirty. All right, guys. So here's what we've got going on. We've got our tube jig, all right? And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take and load up each of the cavities with a hook. And we'll give you a close-up of this jig. There have been some modifications to be able to fit each of these style hooks that we use, the one aught and the 2 aught. So this was originally... It says use with a two aught or three aught. Is exactly. What it says we've been using the one aught just fine, mm -hmm. and when we bought the two odds, we realized we need to improvise a little bit. That's when you asked me to go get that drill out. Yep. And it's just that simple, you know, I took a drill, a larger drill bit uh, than the size of the eye that we're going to be working with. I opened up the eye spot mm -hmm. on the cavity and we'll be able to fit both. Um, so, you know, it, this isn't meant to pour one knots technically, and they usually, I think, plan for it to be a little bit lighter wire hook. Again, we're throwing in a lot of rocks. We like to have that heavy wire hook, get them stuck and get them in the boat. So, um, you know, sometimes you have to make some modifications, but it's as easy as grabbing a drill or a little file and cleaning them up. Sure. So you'll see here, we've got the body of the mold loaded with our hooks now. We're going to close our mold up. You want to make sure you have a good seal here. If this isn't touching both plates, then something jumped out of place. And you don't want to pour it like that. And then it's just as simple as putting your mold under your pot, keeping it on a slight angle so that gravity can do its work to run it in. Go ahead and fill each cavity. Just like that. And then you'll notice, I'm not sure if it'll show in the video, but it'll go from a shiny color to a matte finish. That's kind of how you notice that it's cooled off. And Still how long be, is that normally? 10 seconds. You okay. know, it happens really quickly. Still going to be a little warm, so please be cautious of that. And your jig, your mold will actually start to get warm. You know, you're pouring molten metal into this thing, so it's going to warm up. So a little bit of caution there. Make sure you're working. Mm -hmm. Wear some gloves or something like that is kind of your best bet. And then, bam, you open it up and you see your tube jigs nice and fresh. You're going to pop each one out of its cavity and then we're just going to take a pair of snipping pliers and just quickly pop off that excess and the thing to keep in mind is you're going to save your excess your cutoffs and then put them back into your pot you continue to recycle those everything gets used okay we clean each one up and that's it and obviously if you guys only want three ace then you would just pour one that's it. And at the same time, if you were, for some reason, wanting to mass produce these, you could certainly buy multiples of this same, same style mm -hmm. jig, load them all up with a rubber band, run them all through underneath the pot, and then pop them all out and clean them up. So you've got a lot of options, but we're just showing you your average hobby guy wants to pour some jigs over the winter, spend a couple hundred bucks, get yourself some equipment, and have a good time pouring jigs. Have the equipment that you want to use when you get out on the boat and you're ready to catch them. Easy enough. All right, guys, hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Leave any comments and likes below. Let me know what you guys thought. If you have any questions uh, for fishing tubes, uh, feel free. Check out the video as well. I'm gonna have linked at the end of this one. Uh, a more in-depth video I did on tube fishing. 
And um, you got anything else? That's it, guys. It was a pleasure right, being on the channel. Glad to kind of introduce myself to everybody, and I hope I can lend some wisdom moving forward. Sounds good. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.